Okay, this is a tutorial about QGIS, MicroDEM, Gaia, and Southeast Asian history. So I'm an historian of Southeast Asia, and I have this one issue I'm trying to figure out. Uh, there's an old Chinese text that talks about a place called Sujitan, and I'm trying to figure out where this was. There's some information in the text that can help, um, and among others, it says that it's a place where when you approached it from the sea, you could see five mountain peaks. I think that the place it's referring to by, from those details and others, is this area in what is now West Java. If you're sailing down the coast of Sumatra and passing over to here, it looks to me like this could be the place they're referring to. The problem is when you go into like 3D, it's still difficult to tell uh, what things would have looked like from the coast. So what I'm trying to do is to use satellite imagery to create 3D um, projections so that I can get a better sense of what this coastline may have looked like from the coast. To do that requires using a few different pieces of software and taking various steps. It's taken me a couple weeks to figure this out and so I'm sharing it now in order for me to remember but also to make it easier for people uh, who are trying to do similar things. So the place I start with all of this is with QGIS, a free and open source geographic information system, um, which yes, you can download now. And then I added some plugins to it. One of them is uh, something called Quick Map Services. So to add plugins, you go to plugins, manage and install, and you can search for them there and click install. And this one, after it installs, is, can be found under this web menu. And so you click on that, go to open source map, and this will take us to uh, this map here, which we then want to zoom in on the place we want to get satellite imagery for. So in my case, we're heading down here to the island of Java. I'm gonna try to get it, I think that's Yep, that's the biggest it can get right there. Okay, now to get the satellite imagery, there are a couple options. One is this one, the JAXA, J-A-X-A, Earth API. Uh, there's a website that you go to first, this one, where um, you scroll down and there's information about registration, so you get access to these satellite images. After you've done that and gone through the steps, they're all clearly um, set up here. You can go to the plugins, look for the JAXI Earth API. After you've activated it, you then have to right click on the menu bar and um, make sure that you that this is checked. It won't be initially checked, so you have to check that. Then it will show up over here in the sidebar. Then you select a data set. Uh, what we're looking for is digital surface model. Uh, this one over here, I usually leave at digital surface model. Then we click load, and it's going to do its magic. There we go. Okay, I, I feel a little um, unsatisfied with this one because you see the way this is all blended together here. And I, that's in indicating it's at the same uh, altitude and I doubt that's actually the case. But I'm going to go forward with things anyways. So what I'm going to do is, um, this is the actual image right here going to right click on it, I'm going to export it, save as, we can keep it at raw data, um, then we have to save it, I'm gonna put it here, uh, we're gonna call this test 01, save, don't need to add save file to map because that'll place it over here, I don't need that, I just need the exported version, I go okay. Okay, now we need to uh, make some changes to this exported file so that it will function better when we bring it into 3D software. And to do that, I'm going to use a um, 
a piece of software known as MicroDam, which was developed by someone in the oceanography department at the U.S. Naval Academy, and all of these links to it uh, that I found are dead. However, I did find a in one of these pages an inactive link to the download um, URL. And what I did is I put that URL into the Wayback Machine, and I will um, put this URL in the information below this video. Then I searched for a previous date, and I think when I clicked on it, it started to download. This one doesn't seem to be doing it. Uh, one of these, ah, there it is up there. Yep, it's downloading, okay. I don't wanna do that though, as I already have it. Okay, so anyway, you can get um, MicroDEM, you install it, it places it on your C drive, you go in and click the program, and you get this very retro looking um, user interface. Open the file, again, this is, I, I only have one um, file, so I click on this one, and new tutorial, test 01, open. Space, oh yeah, okay. So yeah, it's it, what it's saying there is that it doesn't like folders that, where is it? It doesn't like folders that have spaces in them. It says that might mess things up. Uh, I'm gonna be um, uh, risky or dangerous here and just go for that. Okay, but yeah, in the future, if, if you make a folder, don't put spaces in it. This program will like that better. So here is my map. And one of the things I'm gonna need to figure out is what the actual elevation is, the highest and lowest points. And down here in the left, it shows this, the bottom left. If I scroll over things, 1761. Yeah, that seems 1760. That seems somewhere up there around 1760 something is the highest. Zero over here is the lowest. Um, that's information I'm going to need. Another thing that I want is uh, I just want the area around here and I want it to be a square. And so what I'm going to do, and I'm going to need to know the distance because I need to input that um, information as well. So I'm gonna click on this um, thing here. It's like a, what do you call those things? A, like a cutout, I can't think of what you call it. Um, and I'm going to click and drag from right about here. Okay, that's good. Then looking down at the bottom, more in the middle, I can see the actual distances. And I'm gonna to try to get this to be 50, 50. Oh, come on. And uh, I got it. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. Let go, bingo. Okay, so now I have a square. Uh, image, I know that is 50 kilometers by 50 kilometers, and darn, I forgot the highest one. It was like 1760, oh, there's 1769, somewhere around that, 1770 or something meters is the highest elevation. Um, so I'm gonna right click now, display parameter, elevation grid values, click on Z range, Okay, it's already calculated it for me, and sometimes this is right on the money, sometimes it's not. This is good enough for me. This could be more accurate. Uh, went to zero, I'm gonna leave that. That's okay for me. Um, if it is inaccurate though, you'd click on specified, and then you can put in your own um, numbers. But I'm gonna leave it like that. Okay, ooh, I like that. Uh, pretty psychedelic. Look at that, one, two, three, four, five peaks. This could be the place. I need to click on grayscale, make it a, oh, see, this is what I think is gonna be a problem. And um, this looks just too washed out here. Um, I don't know if this is gonna work very well, and it might be possible to bring this into a program like Photoshop and bring out some of the details there, but I'm just gonna go forward with this. And maybe there's ways in QGIS or even in this program to do that, I'm not really sure. But I'm just gonna go ahead Gonna put the resolution at 100%. Then I'm going to file, where's export, oh, save image. Uh, where did I go? Uh, new tutorial. Gonna save it as a PNG. We're gonna call this test01 output. And go like that. Okay, 
Now we're going to head into another pro program where we can take this height map and uh, make a 3D model out of it. And in particular, I'm going to bring it into something called Quad Spinner Gaia, which has a free version. But if you want to export at higher resolution, you can use, um, uh, I can't remember the difference in these, uh, but definitely this one can do a lot. I can't remember what, um, what the indie version is, but you can check that out. Okay, so let's load up Gaia. Where is it? Here we go. Okay, and I'm just gonna start out with a blank template. Gonna right click, write file, brings in a way for me to uh, browse here in the upper right and bring in that image here. And it looks like crap. Look at that. That is really, really ugly. Um, and it's getting clipped here at the top like I thought. Um, but we can get it closer to perspective if I click on build here in the upper right. Down, then in the lower right, click on terrain definition. This was like what? I can't remember now. 1777, 1777. This one would be 50,000. 50. See, okay, that gets us something closer to reality. It looks small, but this is 50 kilometers by 50 kilometers. But yeah, that thing is like totally clipped. I don't think this is accurate. So like I said, maybe this file can be cleaned up in an image editing program, but what I'm gonna do is try another technique. So I'm gonna go back into QGIS um, and I'm gonna get rid of this one. Um, why did I use this one in the first place? Because I've read that uh, the resolution of this one is supposed to be the highest of the um, freely available satellite imagery that's out there. So I wanted to give it a shot, but this didn't really work for me. So I'm gonna remove group. Okay, get that out of there. We're back to the same place. There is another plugin that links to NASA satellite data, the SRTM downloader. I'm going to launch that. And this one also uses whatever is in the canvas or the screen here. So I have this image expanded to the full uh, level that I want it. I can click on set canvas extent, and then I can ask it to download the satellite imagery. So it needs four tiles. Okay, this is another one that you have to register for. It's also free, but um, yeah, oops, I've already done this before, but it's in this Earth Data Login program. Um, and you just go to this site, sign up, and then when you uh, go to bring in your satellite tiles, this will work. Connection closed, what the hell just happened? Okay, download. There we go. Oh, what's going on now? Oh, it's doing it again, I think. Okay, download, compete, close. So now I have satellite imagery again, but as you can see, there's this seam going through it because it's actually four tiles. What I'm gonna do is go up to raster, miscellaneous, merge these. Then I have to click in, indicate which layers I want merged. I don't want the open street map, so I just want these other four. Go like this, run, let's merge them, close. Okay, that looks better. Then I'm gonna right click on merged. I'm going to go export, save as, we'll call this test. Zero two, save, and I don't need it there. Okay, that should do the trick. Now, once again, we're going to go to microdem. I'll get rid of this one. I will open a new file. There we go. Test two, open. Uh, yeah, I know, don't, you don't like the space in the path. Okay, uh, and a couple other things. When I first used this program for the first time, there was grids over it and I was able to click on this thing here and deactivate neither. Here was to deactivate the grids. Also, there were these kind of um, legends here telling me how many kilometers this was and what the elevation was. 
and I had to right click here, click on legends, marginalia, and deselect um, elevation and scale bar. That's what it was. And so if those things are showing up, <clears throat> deselect them because when you export, those will be included if they're visible there. Okay, in any case, I need to get back my 50 by 50 kilometer um, image here as when that thing brought in the four tiles, it brought in um, imagery from beyond this, my area of focus. So I'm gonna do this again. This one always takes a little bit longer. Let me go. Okay, that one took me a long time for some reason. Also with this program, if you mess up, there's no undo. You have to simply um, close it and, and reload it again. Okay, but here we have our image and let's see what I need to do now. Again, right click, display parameter, elevation value grid, Z range. Wow, this one's way different. And I think this one is way different because it had that bigger, um, covered more territory and in the bottom right there were some mountains that are actually higher. So this one I do need to change and put in that same number again. I'll leave this number, I think that's okay. And we'll do that. Make it grayscale, click okay. Then go up here, save image. We'll call this test uh, zero 02 output. And yeah, I can't remember what the default here was, but I have it as a PNG file, save. Let's go back into Gaia. We will import a, this new file, test two, output, open, bingo. Okay, now this is looking probably more like reality. Okay, so I brought this one into Gaia and it definitely looks nicer. I'm gonna do a couple things to just clean it up a little bit. Um, what people will do is to use a heal node to kind of clean up any artifacts that might be in there. I'm just gonna put in erosion to get any more, some more natural looking lines. And you can tweak all of the um, parameters here if you want. Then I just wanna get some color. Okay, do this one. Um, I think I found one that was cool. Is it 94? Let's go. Dun dun. 91, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, that's cool, I'm, I'm into that. All right, so now let me try to get a sense. If you're coming down from the coast of Sumatra this way, you'd be looking at things from this perspective. Uh, let's see, let me get some sky in here. Okay, get there. Now that's interesting. Now we're getting something here. Look at that. Just this one mountain area, there could be like could be that the five peaks were like over in this area, like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's that's the one that's closest to the shore. Uh, I don't really know how visible that would have been uh, as you look, you know, as it's more inland. And yeah, I think there's a river that goes up this way. It's possible that this is the place that this text was referring to. Okay, in any case, I've got to do more work on that but I wanted to put together this tutorial so that I'd remember how I did these things and also to help explain to other people who are trying to figure out how to get satellite imagery into a program like Gaia and to have it be accurate. Um, it took me a couple weeks going through a whole bunch of different tutorials to finally get this figured out. Still have work to do. If anyone has any input, I'd love to hear it, but that's it for this one. Okay, see you later.